Disclaimer! The following episode contains spoilers for The Defenders. Don't go crying to your mum if we spoil it for you. You've been warned! Welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. And this week, it's finally here! The Defenders! Cue the music! Hello there, capers, and as I said, welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. My name is Scott James Merridew, and this is a show where we talk about various geek and nerdy related topics, and are joined each week by a very special different guest. Now you will, of course, remember my friend, my compatriot, my cohort, my blood brother, Mark Russell. Hello, everybody. And, of course, our editor in cape, our generalissimo, our Caesar, our Kaiser, if you're a fan of Fallout New Vegas... It's David Malofsky. Hello. Hello to you too. Now, it's been a long wait, but it's finally here. Defenders! Oh my god! I've been so patient. You've always we have been very patient. You've never been patient about anything in your life, Scott. Well, I've waited in any case. <laughs> I waited a fucking long fucking time. Twelve years of it, didn't ask a man. <laughs> I did my waiting! <laughs> yeah, but oh god, and it's finally here! And. Was it worth the wait? Yes, I would say yes. Uh, I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I, th- I think that it's definitely. Uh, it, was, it was very refreshing after the um, sewage that was Iron Fist to have something that was actually palatable. Yeah, me and Mark, we both uh, we both waded waist deep in that sewage, and it's uh, it's remarkable. Yeah. I think it was definitely worth wait, and we're going to talk about it right now. So uh, first, but before first, we do, I just want to give a shout out to that episode that you guys did reviewing uh, Iron Fist a few months back, because that is definitely if you want to hear um, Mark and, J- and Scott's uh, full thoughts, it's definitely worth listening to that one. Oh uh, yeah, we uh, we didn't stop Pole Capers early enough to uh, do the rest of the season, but we'll talk a bit about them at some point. Just a general overview of the Marvel yeah. Netflix shows, where they are, how they're going, and you know where they're going to go in the future. But before we do that, then we ought to talk about how this uh, season is only eight episodes rather than about thirteen, and it definitely benefited from it. Oh my god, there was like there was a moment, and I think it's like the end of episode six into the start of episode seven when it like the story started to drag. And I think, so I live tweeted my whole marathon. If anyone wants to read all my tweets, head over to at AP two H Y C underscore David. Um, I'll probably not tweet anything for the next week just so that that live tweet stays as my, um, my top tweets, but uh, so you can go through it. But like my first thing was like, um, we reached like the middle of episode seven or like the beginning of episode seven. I was like, does everyone need to just talk to everyone? Does everyone need to have a conversation that's recapping everything that's going on? And it's like, they're clearly just stalling. And I was so glad that we didn't have four episodes worth of that. Yeah. I think pacing wise, it all worked out very well. Because uh, uh, even though I do like these shows, uh, there are points towards the end of it where it does start to get a bit like, okay, um, I'm really enjoying this, but can we maybe hurry it along? And it, it never gets to the point where it's a deal breaker for me or it gets to the point where it's too annoying. It's just something I'm slightly aware of. And this uh, sort of, it sort of condensed that whole thing, I think. Yeah, because let's I mean, let's not forget we've dealt with a lot of these characters before. Almost all the characters mm-hmm. we meet are returning characters, so we don't need to give them as much development. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I also just think that like um, it also the, one of the problems though was that there were so many characters, and it felt like at, there was points when it was like everyone needed to get onto the same page, and they like showed us all those conversations of everyone like catching up and it was just like, that wasn't necessary. And it's, we'll, we'll get to it a bit later. I think, I, think um, I don't want I don't want to start this off with a nitpick. Okay. I think Age of Ultron, Age of Ultron had the same problem and too much going on in it. But at least yeah. here we have, there's more room to stretch it out, I suppose, because it's a TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that makes sense. So what is that nitpick? 
Oh, uh, we'll we'll get there. It was yeah. oh, okay. I was saying it's basically like all right. So skipping ahead, then uh, it's basically I think the beginning of episode seven when um. So this is full spoilers, by the way, listeners. If you didn't catch on from uh, Scott's um, warning at the beginning. So in episode seven, when they're like right at the police station and like everyone is in the police station and it felt like every single character needed to have at least two conversations with other people who were there. And it was like every conversation was the same thing. It's like, oh, well, we have to go fight, you know, the hand and you wouldn't believe me if I told you and blah, blah, blah. And it was like by the time you got to the conversation where Foggy is talking to matt and giving him the daredevil costume and like matt's already had like three or four of these conversations and i was just like oh for fuck's sake just get on with it like we don't need to see five ninjas already like honestly if they like just like you know when they when they get to the to mid set the what is it midtown center what's it called midland circle midland circle for the finale fight and um daredevil's like off screen and it walks on in his costume like i didn't need to know how he got that I would I would have just bought it. Like we didn't need the whole scene of Faki going, "Here's your costume, and it's okay if you go beat these guys up just this once, but then it's over, okay?" And then Faki goes and talks to Care. It was just like it was that. But the thing is, is that that like maybe half an hour worth of content was the only time that I felt like the plot was really slowing down, and that unlike all the other shows, it was very very minimal where like i felt like most of iron fist was just that that like sort of stalling the plot yeah iron fist dragged like it was being dragged along by a horse god unconscious and being dragged along yeah with just a corpse to begin with yeah yeah but uh thankfully uh this show doesn't suffer from the same problem at least not to that extent but uh so it's interesting to see these characters and where they will it, 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 it hits the ground running, I think. We're oh, going... absolutely. The the start was like it just draws you right in from the start. Yeah, Jessica Jones is still being a PI, and it's well, literally the first time we see her, she's like half unconscious at a bar. I love Jessica Jones. Oh yeah. And Luke Cage, he's out of prison, yay! And he beats Foggy, yay! I swear, okay, like for the first half of this show, every time I saw a character from one show interact with a character for another show, I made this noise. I made that exact noise. Mine was mine involved yaying and clapping and occasionally jumping up and down. Yeah, I was worried about yes, yes. You two now know each other. <laughs> it's established. And then by the end, I, and I said to myself when the show began, okay, they're all going to meet by the end of the third episode. And bugger it if that's not exactly what happened. Yeah, uh, that's, I actually literally, so the other reason why I was a little late to start was I was just rewatching the last 10 minutes of episode three where they have the big fight scene. Oh, that fight scene. Oh, that glorious fight scene. And it's just everything comes together, they're all fine together. And then, who should turn up but a fucking Electra? Oh, yeah. That's sort of, I think, feel like that's the plot of the show. Everything's going a bit fucked up, and then who should show up but Electra? Yeah, that's like the mantra of the show. Is the, are things going well? No, because then Sigourney Weaver turns up, and then Electra throws up, and then, then things really go weird. Oh, God. And I, I, what I like is that, um, it feels like the biggest elements in this show came from Daredevil and Iron Fist. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, two of them were the close, were the closest tied to the plot where Luke and then Jessica being the ones furthest from the main plot. I mean, you could have had the whole show without Jessica Jones. Like she wasn't as integral to the plot. I mean, obviously they, they worked her in with the architect angle and I thought that the way that everyone came together like that was really well. But you're right that it was very much closely tied to um, Iron Fist and Daredevil. But they, they do explain how they sort of they laid like breadcrumbs and seeds of Midland Circle and everything that's going on in all of these shows. It's like it's tiny bits that you wouldn't notice if I had to go back and recheck all of these things. Like, wait, is that? The case? Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, so to it's... the extent that if they hadn't made this show, I probably wouldn't have even noticed those breadcrumbs. Yeah. And, and that's how subtle they were. It was really good. It was Jeez, very you guys, subtle. You guys aren't perceptive. I, I knew that there was a, there were connections. I just didn't really 
didn't know what they were. Because I remember there being a big hole in, was it Daredevil season it, two? Yeah, it was Daredevil season two, yeah. yeah. And it was a big I, hole, and that was going to come back at some point. Yeah, it's it's more that I think that, you know, everything was peppered in. It wasn't that, like, I needed, it wasn't that I necessarily expected every single one of these little plot strands to converge in Defenders. Like, it wouldn't have surprised me if the Hand hadn't been the main villain of the of of defenders although i i'm really glad that it was because obviously they're they're the ones that are you know no pun intended but have their hands in every yeah. show yeah they're, they're the ones that have been pulling the strings all, all this time and um i'll be honest i'm glad to see them go i'm sick and tired of the hand yeah and i also think that the way that they built up the hand especially like that the villain was the hand it wasn't just alexandra or just electra or just you know, any of the other characters, it was the hand as an organization. Yeah. And I liked that it was um, built up really well in all the different shows. And like, it explains a lot of what happened in Iron Fist a lot better, like why the hand was so integral to Iron Fist when it has traditionally been more of a um, daredevil character or daredevil thing. But yeah, I thought it worked. Yeah, and I, 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 thought, I thought the way they were done very well. It's just like, okay, well, now we're done. Now we can move on and have a whole new threat pop up. And yeah, yeah and on, I'll be honest, the ending, not wanting to skip ahead too much, but the ending where it turns out what they're after is this big <laughs> dragon thing that's supposed to keep them alive forever. I did not see that coming. I wondered what was no. down there, but I didn't know. Like, oh my God, there's a dragon underneath New York. Okay. Well, at least we, at least we got the dragon. So, mm. so let me ask ask you this, and I, I know we're like we're totally skipping around, and in a few minutes we will just like start going through the plot a bit more specifically. But did you guys think that when they were saying that like the same things that happened in like all these other empire cities oh, that yeah. had been destroyed by the hand, that dragons had been underneath those cities as well, and that's why they were just destroyed, or that New York was significant in that uh, way? No, well, I mean, I got the I, former. I, I, I thought that they. I immediately thought, oh, they're doing the Ra's al Ghul thing from Batman Begins. Yeah, it's like, uh, and there's a Lazarus pit, and there's a Lazarus pit, but we're not calling it a Lazarus pit. We're just calling it the substance. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, we brought down all these great empires. We're here to restore the balance, and Gotham. I mean, New York is next. Yeah, yeah. But I like. I did quite like that there was a. There's a dragon corpse underneath New York, or at least Manhattan. But did you think that that was the only dragon or that there were others? No, there probably were others because they said it was the last um, source of, uh, I don't know, whatever they want to call it. Drag dragon. Dragon. dragon not dragon glass, dragon dust, dragon bones. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe a big plot twist. Manhattan is Westeros in the future. <laughs> I would have gone with Skyrim, but sure. Oh, Skyrim too, that works. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. And so... um. Yeah, I, I thought. I thought. I mean, I thought it was interesting that there was a dragon, but then to find out that the whole thing that Han wanted, this ancient thing that they wanted all along, turned out to be just the thing that was going to prolong their lives. I mean, I didn't know whether to feel underwhelmed or like, oh, that's actually kind of clever. I thought that it was an interesting motivation. Um, that like, obviously they've been around for centuries or millennia or whatever, but the fact that like. You see, uh, you know, the way that Alexandra's introduced, and maybe this is a good way to start talking about the, the plot a bit more, but it's, you know, she's introduced and she's, you find out that she's dying. Yeah. Um, and it's like she's having the MRI exam and stuff, and it's a very vulnerable moment. And I think that, you know, you sort of see in that moment, and I think it was also like the whole of her character, you know, every time she wasn't scheming, it felt like she was doing one of her favorite things before she died. Yeah, like, I like felt she like was that savoring was a... every last moment. Yeah. Like in in episode three, she she eats the meal, and then in um, one of the other episodes, she's listening to the the string quartet play like her favorite song, and then she's listening to the old record, and it's like all these things that obviously she enjoyed across the years in her young in her um, long life, and I feel like for Alexandra as a character, it absolutely made sense that she wanted to continue. Um, her own life that she didn't want to die and that's sort of what i got implied by like her doing all these favorite things it's like she kind of is accepting that it might be inevitable 
but she's also like she's willing to do anything to to try to avoid death mm. and of course she needs danny rand to help her out yeah, so should we should we jump to the to talk about the plot a bit more, and we can basically get yeah. Into it. So yeah, as I say, I just st- Starks with uh, Luke Cage getting out of prison. Uh, Daredevil has hung up his horned helm. Uh, Jessica Jones is still being a PI, and Danny Rand is just it's basically tooling around with Colleen Wing, trying to find the hand and figure out what the hell happened to Khan Lun. If you remember the ending of Iron Fist. And then um, it it turns out that the Hand, being led by this lady called Alexandra, played by Scorny Weaver, have uncovered this thing underneath this building, and it's oh, blah blah blah. We've gone over this, but uh, there's a big wall that apparently needs the Iron Fist to open it. Why? I don't know. Um, I mean that made sense to me perfectly. That it was an Iron Fist that built the wall, so it wouldn't would only open if it sensed the presence of another Iron Fist. That made sense. I suppose, but then again, how about you just have an impregnable wall that can't be opened? If what's inside is so dangerous, why even bother giving yeah. it a lock? Just brick that shit up. I, I agree with you, but I also think that they hung a lampshade on that. Like, someone asked that question. Like, I think it was Bakudo. They said, like, why would they... I mean, it wasn't Bakudo, it was the Japanese guy. The, um, he was like... I call him not Nobu. Yeah. yeah. He was like... Um, he said something along the lines of like, why would it be a door when she says it's, she thinks it's a door. And he, it's like, why would they make a door that can be open to something that ne- they never want to get, that they want to keep away from us? Like, why would they make it so you could get to it? it? It's exactly what you just said. Like, why would they, why wouldn't they just destroy it? But the question that he literally asks is, I think, why wouldn't they destroy it? And the que- like, just by asking that question, I mean, you don't necessarily have to answer it, but like the fact that they asked it, like it was enough for me. Like, clearly the writers... I don't know, for me, it's the opposite. For me, if you question it, but don't answer it, that draws even more attention to it. No, because I think it's like, you you would never know why, in that sense. And it's also something that they could answer later in, you know, Iron Fist Season 2, um, or something like that. Like, maybe it's like, you can't destroy those bones for, re- like, religious reasons or something, you know? Yeah, I suppose. But what I like, what happens next, is I really like this, is they all come together... Kind of individually, Luke Cage is trying to find out what's happening to this kid from Harlem who's been recruited into the hand. Jessica Jones has been recruited by uh, uh, the family of the architect who built the building in Midland Circle. Uh, I can't, I can't, Daredevil is trying to figure out what's going on with Jessica Jones. He's sort of been her attorney. And uh, Iron Fist is doing Iron Fisty things. I mean, Daredevil's kind of already in it. He already knew about Midland Circle and stuff. Yeah, and so, and so they all come together individually, but then just sort of pop together. They're all, they're all on the same uh, same destination, different journeys almost, and then they align. Yeah, and I think that, like, so skipping to the, the hallway fight at the end of episode three and sort of the episode four, which is the one at the Chinese restaurant, the Royal Dragon... I thought that that worked really well in the sense that like, like Luke Cage just sort of like bursting in was totally believable because obviously he's been investigating this as well and that sort of thing. But then later at the restaurant, the fact that like, not like they're not all immediately like, of course we should work together. And like the way that they actually come together as a group felt like a bit more organic. And like, there wasn't like, it wasn't like the Avengers where it was sort of just like, Nick Fury going, sit your asses down and be a team. Yeah, no. It, also, it helped that uh, uh, Matthew Murdoch and Jessica Jones met uh, one-on-one and also Iron Fist and Luke Cage met one-on-one and then they all come together. So already you've yeah. got a, a and, bit and of Jessica a... Jones and Lu- yeah, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage had met one-on-one in the first episode of Jessica Jones. Yes, there's already connections there. You're just waiting for the uh, the jigsaw to come together, as it were. Yeah, there was a moment when I was like, like tracking the meetings, and it was sort of by the end of that, basically like in the middle of episode three. I think it was like, oh, so like all that's left now is for Daredevil to meet Iron Fist and Luke Cage, um, and then it was sort of just like he meets them basically at the um, during that big fight scene, and it's like 
that was fine. That like the like I think that at that point it was just like if he had had to go through meeting those two individually, it would have really slowed things down. Yeah, you don't need to have them all or each one of the characters fractally meet the other characters. Just one on one, boom, put in together, done. And then we get the Royal yeah. Dragon, our Lord talking, uh, and sticks back. Before we go on, there's just one other thing that I had about um, the way that the, everyone meets. Okay. So um, when uh, uh, Claire is introducing um, Danny to Luke. Oh, yeah. In the dojo. Like, that scene was amazing. And I just couldn't help, like, my tweet about it was, well, that's, like, the most awkward double date ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it pretty much is, yeah. Oh, God. I, I like that. That was cool. And... Uh, I like how they didn't make them like best buds, like they are in the comics straight away. Well, I, I admit I don't really know much about the comic, the comic versions of these characters because I've I've mostly been connected to them for the MCU. But I think they picked, they took the right route of not having them all immediately get together straight away because the Avengers, I love the Avengers, but theirs was a bit more quick. Let's go do this and stuff, and their their um, inter arguments all kind of happened along the way. But here it's straight up. No, we're not going to do the whole teamwork thing right off the bat. Yeah, but it's not done in an obnoxious way. Like, oh, we'd never yeah. be friends and things like that. It's, it, as you say, if it was organic, it feels natural. And then they'd sit around and just have a bunch of Chinese food. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like going back to what you were saying about Luke and Danny, like, I think that their scenes really stuck out. Like, they actually had, like, some really good chemistry, I thought. Yeah. In fact, let's talk about um, the chemistry. I think all of them had pretty good yeah. chemistry. I was actually, oh. even consider, considering how Finn Jones' performance is criticised in uh, the Iron Fist series, uh, in terms of chemistry-wise and his ability to play off these other characters and these other actors, it works very well. Yeah, I mean, the scene later on when he's, like, tied up and, and um, Luke's, like, guarding him and talking to him, like, that scene was really fun. Like, that was the moment when I tweeted out, Marvel, can we please just have um, Heroes for Hire seasons one and two instead of Luke Cage season two and Iron Fist season two? Like, please, I just want to see a Heroes for Hire show. Now, see, I'd like to play fun with a Luke, for Luke Cage uh, season two. But yeah, Heroes for Hire, I would absolutely love that. That would be cool. Buddy, buddy act. Oh, no, do you know what else I want to see? I want to see Colleen Wing and Misty Knight show. Daughters of the Dragon, absolutely. Yeah, that would be cool. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. And so, yeah, and then uh, they're having a Chinese meal. Stick turns up. Uh, chaos ensues. And then we meet... We sort of meet pretty much meet all the... F- is it four or five? No, it's five members of the hand. Yes. So we've got uh, Alexandra. We've got Madame Gao, who I was, I always thought was going to be, like, the big, big bad. But I guess she's sort of playing second fiddle to Alexandra. Although not really. She's got her own eventually, stuff. I mean, she's got her own stuff going on. Yeah. And uh, we get to see her kick more ass in th- this show, as opposed to all the other shows, oh, where yeah. she just, like, stands there. Come on. She actually had a moment in the fight scene. Yeah, she had several moments. Um, uh, we got... What's his face? Uh, White Hat. Sawande. Sawande, that's it. Uh, we've got Not Nobu. Mirakami. Yeah. And, we've, Mirak- and we've got Bakuto. Sorry, Mark. Mir- Mirakami? Is Mirakami. Mirakami, okay. Or as I'd call him, the Bear Slayer. The Bear Slayer. Um, I think I think we'll go with not Nobu. <laughs> yeah, I like not, <laughs> not Nobu. Nobu. Why? Why? Um, was, oh, I can't have, did Nobu die? Did uh, yeah, stick, Nobu, yeah. stick beheads him at the end of Daredevil season two. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Did I see? Oh wait, but by, by the way, spoiler warning for all of the Defenders TV shows as well. Um, <laughs> I feel like I just want to put that out there as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, and those are the five members of the hand, and I like that there's five members of the hand because there's five fingers on a hand but it's also the way that it mirrors um the defenders and stick oh yeah um and like the numbers sort of stayed consistent for a while like um actually no that's not true but um it's sort of you know like sawande to luke um madam gao sort of was like with um iron fist and then Bakudo was sort of like the. I mean, it doesn't work perfectly, but like Bakudo's more for Colleen, if anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more like, but it was it was sort of like you know there was four defenders plus Stick sort of as like the leader ish for a minute, and then it was um, the five fingers of the hand with Alexandra as sort of like the same as Stick. And then it's revealed that uh, they're definitely going after Iron Fist and they want him for something and they want him alive. 
And this is when Danny Rand decides to be a dick! Right, so, so I, I get that in the, uh, in the Iron Fist series, uh, he was very angry and stuff, and I was stupid and I didn't like that because it's not really how he is in the comics, but I, I'm glad they didn't, like, just in a reactionary way, just change his entire personality. But at the same time, like, when he's angry, he's a fucking moron! Is it too much to ask? They just listens to people and doesn't get, Oh, my mission, I'm destroying the hand, blah, 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 and stop being like fucking Anakin Skywalker. Is that too much to ask? It's it's just like, I mean, it's what you said. He was, he should be more like the wisecracking one. And he's meant to be more like, um, like spiritual and sort of like go with the flow. Here, I feel like he's very much like the the guy who solves problems by punching through them with his iron fist. Which isn't really the way to do it. Like you would expect um, in the comics version, you would actually expect it to be like Danny being the one telling Luke that not every problem can be solved by punching it. Whereas in in the show, it's the other way around. Because he's the youngest. Uh, Yeah, but that that, that to me feels like ageist. You know, it, it just feels like, you know, oh, because he's young, he's brash and he's headstrong. Like, I mean, for God's sake, I, I, the way I view him is he should be more like Luke Skywalker. You know, a bit whiny, a bit immature, but ultimately hard in the right place and, you know, slightly wise beyond his years in certain places. And he, and he's not. He's he's more like the fucking Hulk. Yeah. Yeah, fair and enough. And so uh, they basically... Then they have the, the, the classic, the heroes have a misunderstanding, so they fight each other fight, which... Ends pretty decisively when he uses Which his iron really fist. Fun. Yeah, that was a uh, that was an unmovable object meeting an unstoppable force. Yeah. yeah. Although I feel like they've OP'd the iron fist a bit compared to the series. Uh, overplayed, you mean? No, no, like overpowered. Overpowered. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He totally became like like there was a moment in the first fight scene and like the opening scene. I was like, is he One Punch Man now? Like, <laughs> you know, it, in. In the show, it was like literally, it's like being punched by a fist made of iron. Yeah, Whereas it's, it's, it's here, really strong and really invulnerable, and it's got a little bit of an energy kick back to it. Yeah. And like, that's about it. This time, it's like a fucking concussion grenade. Like when he punches, so like I just watched that, that episode three fight scene. So like when he punches Electra's sword to save Daredevil. It's like he punches a sword. I don't think he even connects with the um, the handle. And she just goes flying. Yeah. And he clears whole rooms with it and stuff. And it's just like, it's very, very powerful. And it is, he's, he is like, you know, a living weapon. But there is such a thing as too much, guys. Just, I mean, just say, a bit. Saying that, I mean, think about the way he uses it in the last episode of Iron Fist. When he like punches the ground. I suppose. In the building and stuff. And it's also like, it's implied that like, so, like, remember that, like, Bakudo was teaching him a little bit more about his powers and stuff and, like, implied that there is more that he could do with the Iron Fist. And so maybe it's just, like... A, and we a see a guy him, in, like, old kind of, like, learning... archive footage using the Iron Fist in a much better way than it ever was used in the series. Yeah, also you having two Iron Fists. Yeah, fucking two. Oh, that was interesting. Uh, when is he going to... Uh, do you know what's... Uh, I don't know why, but I really want to see him with the Iron Fist mask. I just... It doesn't feel... Yeah, I know. It just doesn't feel... Well, I mean, it feels fine. I can do without it. But it, a part of me will always wonder. You know, if you can have Daredevil in his full get-up, like, why not? Well, Dare, Daredevil looked like he had um, the mask on, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I was going to say. It's he like stole Jessica, Jessica's towel, and he looked more like Iron Fist than Iron Fist did. Yeah. Bloody hell, yeah. You could have, Iron Fist could have taken inspiration from that. He's just like, hey, or maybe we'll see that later. Who knows? Uh, they, they, teased, the they teased it in Iron Fist, didn't they? They had the, the footage of the 1940s Iron Fist, and he had the, yeah, the mask yeah. on. Yeah. It's also like, as soon as they put the mask on him, the fight scenes will just get better, because then it doesn't have to be Finn Jones. Yeah. Like, <laughs> definitely, look, he definitely got better in this um in this show between iron fist and defenders like he's clearly done some more training but he's not a martial artist like you can really tell and like the scenes between um electra and colleen like you can tell that when it's the actresses and like specifically when it's like the actress is actually doing like all the martial arts and like it's it's so obvious and then when you see danny it's like is he really even like it just looks shit sometimes like, there's still that moment in the hallway fight scene, and it's in the trailer. It's like, um, 
everyone's sort of punching someone and they're like it's like literally the moment when they're all in the hallway and Danny is literally there like like leaning side to side going one two three okay now I jump and punch and it's like come on yeah I, I, and then it's just because Joe's like tossing people aside Luke Cage pump, punching people square in the face and Matt Murdock like doing his whole ninja thing and then you just got Iron Fist like he just sort of blends into the background at best I think Finn Jones did take um, martial arts lessons for Iron Fist. There must be something there. He, he well, definitely. Well, I could take martial arts him. lessons. Those will make me good. He just yeah, shout people to death. Look, yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. So he he was saying that he basically like he did do some martial arts training, um, for but like it was only maybe like six weeks because he was cast very quick. He was cast and then went to shoot very quickly. Um, and then it was also the fact that like a lot of the time he was learning the specific moves he was doing in a scene like 15 minutes before they actually shot it. And I think that's the issue. That's it's not like, how you, that's not that's how you, not that's not good stunt work. That's not good yeah, choreography. That's because, not good scheduling basically. Because obviously fight choreography shares a lot in common with dancing and there is like a rhythm to it and you know, all that sort of stuff. But it's also like when it's choreographed well, it you shouldn't be able to notice it and i feel like every time danny is fighting i'm always noticing like that it feels more like a dance and like he's counting the steps kind of thing mm. it's i guess it's the difference actually between like a, da- a skilled dancer who can just sort of do the moves and it's it just feels like it's sort of flowing with the mu- music and someone who's going like all right one two three step one two three step one two three you, you know yeah um but I will also say that, like, if he didn't seem much better at fighting than Jessica or Luke, and neither of them have had martial arts training, like, neither of the characters have had specific martial arts training. You know, like, like, like Luke fights very brute strength, just sort of, like, crashing through, like, wrecking ball. And Jessica Jones is sort of, like, you know, like you said, throwing people around. And that makes sense like jessica jones even says like she doesn't know karate yeah no, and she doesn't she take him out yeah she punches him out um when they're all fighting each other yeah, yeah. and that's when he gets tied up in a chair <laughs> the iron fist ladies and gentlemen <laughs> or it's also the chains i suppose you know, they, they tie him up but um he went rope, also, so like, put him chains. danny is the one who should be able to take all those three out like in the comics if you had Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Daredevil all fighting, Iron Fist should come out on top. Like, that's just it. Like, yeah. he should be the best fighter of them. And it's like, Daredevil is so far and beyond what Iron Fist does. And it's just like, it, he's supposed to be the best martial artist in the world. Yeah, it's... uh. Yeah, I mean, I can understand them not wanting to make him, again, too OP. Just like, oh my god, he could win every single fight. But at the same time, like, there is a balance, an equilibrium to have b- between um, being very powerful and being vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, it's also like, look at the way that they do it with Daredevil. The fact that, like, he probably is the best fighter in that group. But it's not like, I mean, it's basically like just because you're a better fighter than someone like just like here, here's a good example. The Bakudo versus Colleen scenes when they're oh, sword yeah. fighting at the end, they're like Bakudo is definitely meant to be a better swordsman. Like, but they've both had so much training that it kind of doesn't matter. So there is that tension that like, they are almost at the same level. And it's like, if Iron Fist was fighting Bakudo, I would believe that like, there could be, you know, some tension there just because like, just because you have all that training doesn't mean that you're always going to make the right choice in what punch you throw. You know, it comes down to luck at some point, but with Danny, it always felt like actually every, like it just felt sort of like he just wins because he has to, because it's the plot dictates that he wins. Basically. Yeah. Uh, until, until I say he's, he's tied up and then stick makes a uh, interesting decision to cut his fucking head off. Uh, this made sense for the character of Stick. I thought he's sort of a guy who will... I mean, we've seen him, like, be willing to kill children if he thinks they'll, uh... I mean, we saw him cut his own hand off to get away from Alexandra. Like the Which was fucking killed... badass. So Stick goes to chop fucking Danny Rand's head off, 
And then Electra comes in and shit gets whacked. Well, no, no, shit doesn't get whacked. Shit gets real. Yeah. I mean, stick I was not expecting Stick to die. Yeah. and Especially, especially after his near-death experiences in season two of Daredevil. Yeah, and cutting his hand off at the beginning of Defenders. And so, yeah, he sticks dead. Oh, no. Uh, and then Electra gets Iron Fish, kidnaps him. Remarkably easy. Like, I've, I thought I thought he was conscious in that scene. I think he's no. come to the, uh, whatever, what smoke stuff that, um, knockout gas, I suppose. Yeah. Again, the Iron Fist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Conquered by incense. Yeah. Well, it's a little cage, but yeah, yeah so, um. Well, they had no sense to begin with, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so then it's a race to basically rescue the Iron Fist. Yay, I'm so glad you're here, Danny. I think I think if Danny just never went back to New York, things would have just been so much better. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also like I really wish so like my one like plot thing, and this goes back to my nitpick at the very beginning of the show, if they had all just woken up in that warehouse and then just immediately gone to rescue Danny, the plot would have moved so much faster. The fact that they all got arrested and had to like sit in the precinct, like and then like escape from the precinct, like all that stuff was just such bullshit. I'm sorry, I really, really didn't like that part of it. Okay, yeah, I, 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 but I disagree. I disagree, but I also agree. I would have preferred it if the supporting characters were actually given something to do apart from sit around and talk. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think Trish and um, Karen Page had some stuff to do in yeah. terms of like looking over crime scene photos. Yeah, Trish and Malcolm disappear halfway through the series and they pull up again in the last episode. Like, where do they go? Yeah. Where are they hiding? Yeah, it's well, that, like... I mean, it makes sense that they're all together in one place because they've got to make sure that the hand can't get to them. And that I thought was a sensible thing to do. But once you, as you say, once you get them there, yeah. Yeah, it was like, it's very logical to keep them all in the same place like that. But then at the end of the day, it sort of is like, so now what? Like, like why even have those characters around? Why not? Why not? Like, like Malcolm could have been, like, didn't need to be there at yeah, all but, in the whole I mean, series. He could have just been like, he's visiting his mother or something, you know? I mean, they got rid of Ward by saying he was on a business trip for like a month. Yeah, no exactly. Loss, no loss there. Yeah, no, no big loss, yeah. Yeah, one, uh, of my, one of my first tweets was... Um, it's taken a literally long time for everyone to meet, at it, to, for all the defenders to meet, but at least the Meachams aren't around. <laughs> yeah, neither of the Meachams are. I'm slightly glad about that. Yeah, Rather forward. surprised, though, that we did not see What's His Face. It's not What's His Face. Uh, What's His Face, uh, Iron Fist. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I know. Um, da, da, um, Davos? Davos, yeah. No, Davos. Oh, yeah. Da, da, Davos. Davos, Davros? yeah. Which one's no, not no. the Darlin? <laughs> Davros <laughs> is the creator of the Daleks. Davos is the enemy of <laughs> the Iron Fist, also known yeah. in the comics as Steel Serpent. That's Surprised we didn't see him, actually. I'm not. I'm really glad he, he wasn't in it. I think the less that the show was already so steeped in Iron Fist that adding the Steel Serpent would have just actually detracted from the rest of the plot. It would Pretty have been like if Black... Like, it's like the same reason why I'm glad that like Black Mariah was met was referenced but she wasn't actually in it yeah and shades I, again this is feels very much like a daredevil iron fisty thing so it, it's also like bear in mind that this all took place over like three days maybe yeah four. that's a good point it keeps up like a very good pace in that regard yeah and it's yeah. sort of like like luke cage especially he's just gotten out of prison and this is like his first few days out of prison it makes total sense that we don't see um mariah and shades and all the rest of like the harlem cast yeah basically uh, though uh, I'm glad that uh, Misty, Colleen, and Claire get involved, and they all go to Midland Circle to rescue Danny. But then they have this weird thing where there was this big debate about blowing up the building, and Jessica Jones makes the only logical argument in this. In which case, it is you know I'm not going down for domestic terrorism. Okay, fine. But everyone else, aside from the domestic terrorism thing, seems like really, really goddamn concerned about blowing up an empty building in order to stop the hand from like getting what they want and like is, does this really need to be discussed this much do you all have this I, many reservations well i, I think some so. reservations i get yeah, i think so this many i think so because if you look at uh the mcu and also history you've had the incident which left which was a big impact on new york plus 9 11 and we all know we all know what happened last time 
buildings fell down in New York. Yeah. So I think there's that. Let's also not forget in the MCU, um, the Hulk destroying Harlem, which yeah, nobody Hulk really talks Harlem. about. And which city did he trash in Age of Ultron? That was um, in South Sokovia. Africa. Uh, yeah, because, you know, the, yeah, cause, you know no, Sokovia. No, no, no. He, he, no, before that. Oh, you know, the, the fight with... Um, the fight, the fight with uh, with Iron Man, the Hulkbuster fight, that's in South Africa somewhere. Yeah, so I, you I thought it was a... Cape Town, but obviously not. Yeah, so you yeah, a... maybe it was Cape. Town. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so there's a there's a big history of the the consequences of the superheroes doing heroic stuff, and obviously there's a, but because they're all locals with, within New York, I think there's a more emotional connection and concern. Like, what if we end up causing domestic, domestic terrorism and reenacting nine uh, eleven again? Yeah, it, it's right. also like think about um, the end of Homecoming, Spider-Man: Homecoming, where where he like literally is trying to like pull the turn the plane so it doesn't crash into buildings and stuff. I think like especially when you're dealing with New York, like blowing up a building is is very like you know hot button. Like, I suppose like it, it can it's it's still fresh and stuff. I think I think it made a lot of sense. And it's also like obviously they're good people in that sense. Like I guess I get that. It's but then empty, Luke Cage like, like brings it up, like saying, "Okay, if we're going to do this, let's not kill any innocent people." And everyone's like, "Agreed." And I'm sitting there thinking, D- doesn't that sort of go without saying? I-, I I never expected any of the defenders to say, "Oh, what we're not going to kill innocent people." Oh well, then I'm out. Never mind. No, I mean I I could I I would expect um Stick if not Daredevil to totally say like. There's ten people upstairs. Like it's an acceptable loss, sort of thing. Like it's collateral damage. Well, but stick, it's also like yeah, you're blowing sure up a fucking Daredevil. building. How can you be sure that like just the process of blowing it up? Obviously, if it's empty, but if you're demolishing a building in a rather like slapdash kind of way, um, how are you going to even be sure that like the building like falls correctly? Um, doesn't like. Well, doesn't the architect know, of the building uh, map out where it needs to be yeah, demolished properly? I know, but it doesn't matter. Like it, a lot of that stuff, for my mind, it was like this. Still feels like a lot of people probably could have gotten hurt. Um, but I, th- I mean, I get why there was a debate. I ultimately think that you they had to make that choice. Um, hmm. But I definitely understand why they had to. Also, I mean, it really slowed down the pace again. But I actually understand why you needed that scene and you needed to show that, like, they weren't really gung ho about the idea of having to destroy, like, a building like that. Okay. All right. But then, but then after that discussion, uh, they get right into the action and then it's a one big free for all. Yeah. And they even had that classic Marvel shot of it's like the one continuous shot during the fight scene where you get everyone gets like their little moment. Yeah. And they're all fighting hand ninjas and it's all awesome. And Colleen and Claire and Misty are all fighting and trying to help him to blow up the building, basically. And then um, here's how I thought that scene was going to go down. I thought Claire Temple, played by Rosario Dawson, was going to die. Yeah, so, so did I. I thought she was going to go too. We all thought she was going to die. I, I thought, kind of feel like yeah. she should have. Yes, and then she doesn't. And thankfully, Colleen didn't die. And then thankfully, Misty Knight didn't die. But her she arm her did arm. get fucking cut off. I was so happy. I like That was like the only <laughs> spoiler I tweeted. And eventually I deleted shit. it because two people got really mad at me. But like I was so glad when Misty lost her arm. Because in the comics... So, so, Mark, you might not know this. In the comics, yeah, I, I know she's got, a, yeah, she's got a bionic arm. But got a bionic arm. But you're yeah. very happy that she had her arm removed, which is well, not often like, that you say that. You're enjoyed in, that she got disarmed. In in Luke Cage, she gets shot in that arm, and it was like a hint at. And I thought it was like until like like I wasn't sure if that was going to lead to it, but you know this was pretty epic. Yeah. Also, uh, that's, that's, that's about that's that. cool but, to see those three characters fighting. Like, yeah. That, that, before that before we get off the arm, though, there's one other thing. So in every Phase 2 movie, um, someone loses an arm. Re- oh, so the Winter Soldier, he lost his bionic arm. Um, yeah, so in... So, wait, wait. It starts with Iron Man 3. Um, so Iron Man 3, uh, he, like, chops off... Um, ki- uh, uh, the, Guy Ritchie's arm. Guy Ritchie's arm. Not Guy Ritchie. Guy. Guy Pierce. Guy, Guy Pierce. Pierce's arm. Yeah, Killian. Sorry. Whatever his name is. He chopped Killian Aldrich. Yeah, and he um, 
throws it back. Then in uh, Winter Soldier, I think it's the Winter Soldier arm. I think someone else loses an arm. And then it's like um, Coulson's arm gets cut off. Uh, Ultron cuts off Claw's arm. Uh, who, who else? Um, in Civil War, again, the Winter Soldier with his arm. No, 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 it's, it's, that's that's phase three. Um, and oh, then right, uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Groot's arm gets cut off at one point. Um, and in Ant-Man, uh, Darren, Darren Cross, the first thing that shrinks when he's like dying is his arm. So that's all a reference to The Empire Strikes Back. This has been said to be the start of phase two for the Defenders, not the end of phase one. So I think okay. it's that Misty losing her arm was also just part of that same phase two tradition. What a weird trope to have. I know. Marvel, we like chopping people's arms off. What's your problem, Marvel? Jeez. And uh, <laughs> Danny has a pretty cool fight with Elektra, but then she manipulates him into opening the wall thing that houses like the bones of the dragon because Danny Rand is an idiot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like if I, if I was him. And I was fighting her, and I knew that she wanted me to use my Iron Fist to open the wall. I would not use my Iron Fist. At the same time, he's at a huge disadvantage against Electra. I mean, we've already discussed this. He's a terrible martial artist. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Uh, and she's pretty damn good. And I, I, I like how, th- with Electra, I like how this show built her up to that point. Like, at first, she's just like, she doesn't really know what's going on. And then she's just, like, following Alexandra's orders. And then she's Electra again. Only next time, she's definitely 100% fucking evil. Yeah. I really like the twist that, like, when she killed uh, Alexandra and basically became the main villain. I was like, that's really clever, actually. That's really Hmm. something you don't often see Marvel doing. I want to see. I I want to talk about that more when we get onto the characters. Yeah. Uh, So, um, and yeah, so then they... Then it looks like, oh crap, they're going to be trapped down there. Bombs are going off. And uh, they all get out except for Daredevil and Elektra. And they embrace as the rubble falls down. And that is how Daredevil died. It's very sad. I was actually surprised when that happened. I thought like, oh my god, did they just kill off Daredevil? Oh my god. Maybe he survived. The problem is they've already announced Daredevil season 3. So there was no (laughs) attention at all. I see. I wasn't aware of that. You so when see. I was, I so when I saw Daredevil, well, I thought I saw Daredevil die. I thought, oh my god, they actually killed off Daredevil. Did they? No, they did. And then that just went on and on and on and on. And I thought, oh my god, they actually killed off a major Marvel character in an MCU project. Holy crap! This has never happened before. I, I don't want him to die. I'm not glad that he's died, but I'm glad that they had the balls to do that. Oh my god, this shows just how committed they are to genuinely good storytelling. Oh, he's alive. Scott, I mean, it's Marvel. Like, the, like I don't know what they, I was thinking. They fooled me! They, they fooled me! Like, let's, let's be honest. The amount of times that they've cut arms off doesn't even pales in comparison to the amount of times that they've done the death fake out. I mean... How many, like, Coulson uh, in Avengers? Um, he did uh, die. Sam, Sam Jackson in uh, Winter Soldier. Um, Loki, Loki like, twice. Like, Loki twice. Like, everyone. Oh, yeah. Loki uh, cuts off Thor's arm in Dark World. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But not, but not really. Um, but, yeah, it's like, it's like the death fake out has become, like, a Marvel standard. I don't know. Lord of the Rings did it quite a lot too. No, no, no. I'm not saying that like they they own the trope. I'm saying that they do it all the time. Yeah, and so, so then he's he just Matt Murdock just sort of half wakes up on a bed surrounded by nuns. I'm sure that'll that that'll be interesting. But it does if you if you listen, the nun says, uh, "Get Sister Maggie." Yeah. Do you know who that character is? I'm vaguely familiar. Vaguely, yeah. Uh, major yeah. spoiler alert: she might possibly be Daredevil's mother. She will be absolutely. They they wouldn't have said Maggie if it wasn't going to be her his mom. Yeah, mm. isn't that? Well, I'm it? wondering how a bunch of nuns got him out from underneath a building without anyone noticing. Oh, so, that's probably got him out. Oh, maybe. No, I, I, there's definitely something going on um, with the nuns as well. Like I remember that Maggie is a nun, but there's more to it. It's almost like she's a branch of the Chaste or something like that. Um, we are nuns with guns. Uh, not, 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 not that necessarily, but just like they're, they're in on the mystical stuff. Let's yeah. put it that way. Oh, that's another thing. I, I'm sort of sick of um, these heroes facing off against villains that have fucking swords. 
Like, all the members of the hand have swords. If I just walked in there with, like, a semi-automatic, I'm pretty sure I could take <laughs> on lots of these people. Yeah, that's a good point. I always wondered. Like, I like films. swords. I'm all for swords. I like that. I think it's cool that they use swords, but just, like... There's a reason why guns eventually surpassed swords. But they do have a scene with, with the guns. When they're at the diner, they they burst in with a bunch of guns. Yeah, and then oh, yeah, that's, that's the guy out. But yeah, I thought the whole point was that they weren't using guns because they didn't actually want to kill Danny. Yeah, at least not until uh, later. Yeah, because Madame Gal knocks the guy out and says, we don't want to kill him. Stop shooting him, you idiot. Yeah. She doesn't knock him out. She fucking shoots him in the back of the head. Yeah. Well, yeah. Still, anyway. Yeah. yeah, and so... um. And then they all sort of go their separate ways. Luke and um, Luke does not end up with Jessica Jones, but rather continues to be with Claire Temple. Not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, we know that just. It feels like they're postponing the inevitable. Yeah, yeah, and it's also it also feels like they're doing that so that the shows basically because they don't want to have it be that Jessica Jones and Luke Cage are always have to be in each other's shows. I suppose, yeah. I mean, th- if you think about it, if they went the full, like. If they went the whole way and made Heroes for Hire plus put um, Jessica with Luke, then the, it would basically just be the three of them without Daredevil. That would like they would ha- all have to be in each other's shows all the time. Basically, yeah. Uh, Iron Fist sort of gets a bit inspired by Daredevil, and it's like I'm gonna be a. Uh... And then we see like the Empire State Building lit up red in memoriam of Daredevil. Okay, and. Um... And then you see Iron Fist, he's like, I'm going to be like the city this the, the city this hero needs or something. I don't know. The hero the city needs. Not the one it really wants. Right, no, it's um, Iron Fist, so he would say the city that this hero needs because he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe it will inspire him to get the costume. Yeah, well, maybe. And uh, and then uh, Jessica Jones goes back to being a pay We see the alias investigation net window plate thing. Yay. And I was going to be fully smash it again. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll get smashed at some point, but eh. and uh, that then is all sort of wrapped up in a nice night tidy bow, and then we get a spoiler for Punisher. Teaser, you mean? Yeah, it's a teaser. Oh, sorry, teaser. Whatever. Yeah. We get to see Punisher, and like, yay, we're getting that, yay. I think they'll use um, the Punisher series to finally give explain what Karen's backstory is because they've kind of been dancing around that for, since the first season of Daredevil, haven't they? Yeah, it also makes a lot more sense that she's in Punisher if everyone thinks that um, Matt's dead. Yeah. And plus it all ties it in together. And I I like, uh, they basically said, like, with the exception of Luke Cage turning up and Jessica Jones, like, aside from that, they kept the show separate until Defenders. But now the Defenders is done, at least this one, um, they can have a bit more overlap now. Yeah, I think a lot of the side characters like Misty will probably start popping up in Jessica Jones and more of the other shows. Yeah, although I do want Misty, as I said, I do want Misty and Colleen to go on their own show together. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Misty was part of all of um, maybe not Daredevil, but the other three shows. Yeah, but that, that, that would be interesting. But and so, yeah, because again, that's what happened with the MCU. You know, you they had all these individual properties, but then they start having overlap and characters popping up here and there, which is the correct way to do it. DC. <laughs> so anyway, so we talked about the plot enough. I think it is time to talk about the individual characters. Yeah, um, and I'm just going to start off by saying I think we've talked Iron Fist to death. Yeah, yes. I think we're done with it. Again, um, once again, we are done with Iron Fist. Let's talk about Daredevil. Yes. Um, Cool Mark. to see him in costume. I love seeing him in costume. I think it's a co- such a cool costume, and Charlie Cox just uh, wears the hell out of it. <laughs> he looks great in it, but there was a meme that was going around when the first trailer came out that was sort of like, um, it was basically the picture of the four of them with Daredevil in costume, and the caption was, "When you're, um, when you, uh, what was? Oh shit, I'm screwing this up. Um, when your friends are going to con, and you're the only one who cosplays." <laughs> Yeah, but, but I mean, that, that I think ties into how they're all they're coming together, they're all different. Jessica Jones is a PI. She has superpowers, but aside from that, she's fairly down yeah. to earth. Uh, Luke Cage, he's, he's got a whole bunch of problems. Uh, and yeah, I, I know. This is an immortal, uh, latest on a long lineage of Kung Fu warrior things. So, I mean, they're all different. I mean, yeah, it made, it made a lot of sense. It just it kind of looked funny when he was up, when he was like standing next to people without costumes. Yeah. But then, when again, when he's in his own series, he doesn't look silly. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
And uh, so, yeah, he's going, it, it's him um, working his way, but sort of falling back into the world of Daredevil, even though he's trying to give it up, uh, which, of course, will last. Of course, it's going to mm-hmm. last. When I saw that, for, for, when that first happened, I thought, oh, yeah, this is going to be forever now. He's never going to be Daredevil again. Yeah, right. Yeah. And there's nothing that's not much more to talk about, uh, uh, except for his relationship with Elektra and the continuation of that. Which I had a little problem with because he's supposed to sort of be like trying to form a relationship with Karen. And like, it's almost like he can't choose between like, obviously, they represent his two lives and how he can't choose between his two lives. But like, it's also like, just just fucking get with Karen. Like, just, I don't know. God's sake, Matt! Pull your thumb out of your that. ass and get together with Karen. Yeah, I have I have some beef with Daredevil, and, and it's, it's just might be because I'm a bit bitter about season two of his show. Um, I thought that his the whole I don't know Catholic um, schistic martyrdom thing he was getting a bit annoying now. It just keeps going on and on and on about I've got to protect the city, I've got to put everyone in it, even if it means cutting ties with everyone I know. It just really annoyed me when he when he cut off ties with Foggy and Karen in season two, and he's doing it again now and defenders. It's really got on my nerves. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure about the Catholic thing, but uh, for me, as in this series at least, the thing that got on a bit on my nerves was him saying, "I love this city. This city means so much to me." Oh, really? Is that why you only patrol one neighborhood of it? Yeah, exactly. Go go and patrol Harlem. Then if you try going to Harlem, then he might end up. Yeah, Luke Cage loves the- Harlem. He doesn't go on about how much he loves New York City. Jessica Jones yeah. is up in Midtown. She just go on about how much. Or oh, she never would. But that's. I mean, so like, like um... it's also like like. Can we just like stop for a second? Like Manhattan is not that big of an island. Yes. Yeah, like Spider-Man. How... Spider-Man's territory. Like, you know, Spider-Man covers. Well, Spider-Man's in Queens, but like Manhattan is small. Like, you can't just sort of pick and choose like i don't know but again i also think at the end of the day like you can't also like ru- like patrol the whole island in one night you know yeah mm. so yeah yeah but anyway. aside from, any any anything else we want to talk about daredevil uh, uh well, he was bad. i thought he would his relationship with Electra. i've never really got we're going to talk about Electra in a minute but i've never really connected to her as a character yeah Really? I mean, I don't, see, I have. I, 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 I really think like her, her sort of damaged side of the film really appealing. I really like her in the comics, but this version, like, I think she's great as a villain. I've never connected with her. I've never liked her relationship with, um, with Matt in this in this version. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I, I I liked it. I thought it had an interesting conclusion at the end with them fighting but also like reconnecting at the, yeah at the, no, i mean at the, the rubble starts to fall and it's oh god yeah i mean so my one big thing about daredevil was the the scarf yeah i just was like was funny. like when he wouldn't take it off it was starting to get stupid yeah why don't they all free just grab him and rip off his head it, well, they, he try uh iron fist tries and he blocks him um right. but it's also like he puts the scarf on. So again, I just watched this scene again because I, I wanted to double check this. He puts this, he grabs the scarf off of her. He pulls it on in front of another person. Like, Oh yeah. And he's there's like a it. mailman or something. And he pulls it on in front of the other person. And then instantly it's like, get that parkour. And like, he's running up the stairs and like jumping around. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, why didn't you just take the elevator? Yeah, like, basically. Like, and like, like I understand him wanting to protect his secret identity from like the civilian populace, but Jessica Jones has already seen his face and knows who he is. But like, why would you run up to the top floor of that building? <laughs> and, stories on like, there. Because you're you're expecting a fight. Like, why would you run up? Like, it's at least thirty stories. Like, why would you do that before? A fight? Like, like, running up thirty stories is really hard. Oh, well, are you tired? Yeah. I also, then, like, I couldn't stop thinking, like, that scene, and I think the one right before, I couldn't stop thinking about Pickle Rick. I just was like, get that parkour! <laughs> I'm Pickle Rick! Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as I, I thought, I, uh, it, it had a good fight scene to compensate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the and, tradition of staircase, elevator, and corridor fights continues. Yeah. Yeah. As... Well, I really, I really did like his fight scenes as well. Like, I think his moments were really good, and 
especially like you said that last fight scene with um Electra was pretty epic I, I thought so and um so moving on to Jessica Jones hey. uh, she's still damaged as ever doesn't get as much character development in this show I thought yeah I feel like so like a lot of the character development in this sh- in this show and I think it's more pronounced here but in Avengers you see it as well that like because it's not the dedicated series for that character you kind of don't want to have too much happen as in the way of character development but you also can't not can't do nothing and I feel like Jessica's arc was probably the smallest in the sense that like it's sort of like she's still dealing with um Kilgrave's death or killing Kilgrave I should say and she's still dealing with that and she's just hasn't gotten back into being a PI and so the defenders is like well now she's going back into being a PI so that when you start she does a lot of stuff yeah but it's like it's but when you start Jessica Jones season two and it's like well now she's a PI again and it's all like not fine but it's all there um and it's sort of like you wouldn't need to have watched defenders to go into Jessica Jones season two so, I mean, it makes sense, but, like, I also felt like she just was the weakest of the characters in this, and I really didn't like that fact. Yeah, although it was just cool to see Jessica Jones again. I was I was happy with that, to be honest. I, mean, I loved her. Her dialogue was definitely the best of the group. Like, oh, yeah. when she sees him, when she sees Daredevil in the costume, and she just looks at him and is like, the scarf was better. <laughs> <laughs> nice ears. They're horns. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was cool. Or um, I'll punch you. Sh- if you touch me like that again, I'll punch you so hard you'll see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's great. I think she may have developed full-blown alcoholism by now that she should seriously get looked at, but still. Oh, mm. I, I, I did laugh my head off when she on the subway scene. Yeah, where she just steals a beer from an unconscious homeless man. Mm. She's like, what? It's been a long week. Yeah, well... well. Technically, I suppose it has, but still. And uh, then there's Luke Cage, who, uh, again, this character I was very glad to see again. Mm. I like that he sort of continues his mission to help, you know, keep the streets safe, keep kids out of trouble, and just, and that's how he gets into it. Into the yeah. I-, I feel like, you know, his development is basically he's poised to take over Pop Shop and, and do whatever, and probably open Heroes for Hire and stuff. Yeah. Um, we actually see the barbershop, him go, him go past the barbershop as he goes back into Harlem. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I didn't even catch that. You didn't? No, I, 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 saw, I saw it. I thought, yay, that's the place. Yeah. The trailers? No, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it was in the trailers, but... Uh, it was, it was. It's in the well, I, I, I don't see the trailers, so I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, um, that was cool. And, um... I think... I think his relationship, his relationship with uh, Iron Fist is the thing that got the most development for him. Mm. Aside uh, from... And him learning to work with other people... But aside from yeah. that, what what else is really going on with him? I mean, he he kind of just it's bringing it's it's exactly the same as the others. It's it's just bringing him to the status quo, you know, and setting him up for season two of of his own show. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I thought he was really fun. I, I enjoyed a lot of what he was doing. Um, you're totally right about his scenes with with Danny being great. Uh, I really actually like their fight scene together. Like when he comes in the room to save Danny, like that in that episode three fight scene. And then they're like back to back when they're shooting at him. Like here like, is for hire, bitches. It's like, yeah. I really like that. I, I think I thought though their fight scene when they first meet was a bit contrived. I think if they just like, again, it's a typical superhero thing. If they just talked for like two seconds, they'd realize yeah. they're on the same side. It's, um, but then, it's then what the like, Weekly Planet call uh, post-it note problems, where it's like, it's basically the only reason there's that that conflict exists is because someone didn't tell someone else something. Like the only reason that conflict exists is because Claire was slow introducing Luke and Danny. G- provided it would only she'd only been out of prison a day, but like uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And also, um, I thought like Iron Fist could have summoned his Iron Fist. A bit sooner. Like, he spent, like, a good, like, two minutes trying to punch Luke Cage and failing miserably. Like, yeah, after, yeah. like, the first ten punches, do you not think, like, maybe then someone had Iron Fist instead of, like, 50 punches later? 
I also thought it was a nice callback to the scene in in Luke Cage, like the the punch, and which is obviously in the trailers again. But like when he punches him in the face, and it's the same effect as when Luke Cage punched that other guy in the face. Yeah, it's just like, oh wow, the tables have turned. Uh, aside from that, I thought it was still pretty good. Uh, we talked a lot about Iron Fist himself, so we'll move yeah, we'll on. Skip. He's an idiot. Uh, I want to talk about Alexandra a little bit. So do uh, I. Now, I just want to put this out there. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer. Was it worth getting Sigourney Weaver? Yes. yes. I think so too. I wasn't at first. When the show first started, I thought, like, I like Sigourney Weaver. She's doing a very good job at this. Was it really worth getting her? But as the show went on, like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Sigourney Weaver is so badass. Oh, absolutely. She's been and, like, fighting in this movie, but she's still she, badass. Yeah, she but, did, but, like, she, the scene yeah. where she resurrects Elektra, and does, it's, like, the, the kind of the only fight scene she really gets. But, like, in that moment, I was like, oh, it was so... Like, Sigourney Weaver was great in that scene. And just, like, the way that she, like, takes off her scarf before she goes into it, and, like, the way she's sort of just, like, side, sidestepping and, like... It felt very much like a, a mother giving birth scene. Like it, it re- reminded me of that a lot and and stuff. And it that sort of relationship, good. I thought, was very interesting, especially yeah. from like a mother daughter so, perspective. And then they have that conversation, like I had a daughter and stuff, and now you're sort of replacing her, which makes her death all the more tragic in a way. And that uh, that old yeah. switcheroo that you mentioned, the prodigal daughter killing yeah. the mother, kind of and thing. I like how it happened exactly after. She ordered the death of Matt Murdock. I yeah. think that if she hadn't said don't, if she said said don't kill Matt Murdock or ignore Matt Murdock or even hadn't mentioned his name, she would have lived. And she said but Daredevil, the, whoever he is. The, the, yeah, but the second she said that, she was dead. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I really liked. So this is something sort of about the show as a whole that each of the characters still kept their color. So oh, yeah. with. Like the red Daredevil, purple Jessica Jones, yellow Luke Cage, green Iron Fist, which is so represented it, in the opening credits. Yeah, but oh, it's Jessica also Jones is more blue, blue, purple, whatever. Um, but it's also like it's so consistent in the show that even in the diner scene, when they're shot under, diff- they're shot like they're specifically placed under their colors. Yeah, so that it's... they can keep it that way. And this the scenes when they're alone, it's also the same where it's like. Um, you know, Jessica Jones scenes all have that sort of bluish tone and the Daredevil scenes have more red in it, etc. And Luke Cage is that like yellow. But with what I really liked is that Alexandra was white. Yeah. And is everything it... about her was like pale. She was always dressed in white. The the Midland Center Circle building, all the interior was white. Everywhere she went, it was all very white. And then you had the scene where Electra stains her clothes and that's the scene where she's also wearing the darkest colors that she ever gets mm-hmm. and i was like that was such a like that's so well done like, it's that it, it's that i think it's called mise-en-scene that attention yeah. to detail yes. which we learned about very well in uh film studies yeah yes but, but, yeah, um, but still but still it's, it's small things and it's, it's not that you don't really notice but when it's there and it's done well it's done yeah. very well. It, it also lent to them like being consistent. I, I know we're straying a little bit, but the colors also lent to them being consistent about like the tone, like the not the color tone, but like the actual tone of the series being consistent through the characters. So like, which was a bit choppy in the first episodes because it felt like you were cutting between a scene from Daredevil to a scene from Iron Fist to a scene from Jessica Jones, but it also kept that consistency from each of their their own individual shows to the defenders and it was i thought that was that really worked eventually uh really well yeah i thought so too it it, it all just comes together and it's all glorious uh any side characters that we want to talk about um Gal most of them yeah i think yeah. most of them uh Foggy and karen um they got a we bit more focus uh, i'm glad they did because we got like, we already had like two seasons of daredevil so this felt yeah. like a culmination of that. So, yeah. Mark, did you say Gal? Yeah, I wanted to talk about... Because okay, she's wh- been here the longest out of all of them. Uh, of the villains. Yeah, of the villains. Uh, do you think she's gone? Yeah, well, I mean, a building fell on her, but then it also fell on Daredevil, so... I, I don't think she's gone. I think she's probably going to come back with Elektra um, at some point. Whether they're on the same side or not, I think they're going to be linked. 
Um, and it will be in Daredevil, I bet. Um, but I don't think they're going to be the main focus of season three. Or I'm, I'm really hoping they don't bring them back until season four. Hmm. And uh, as I said, we got to see a bit of Jerry Hogarth. I could have done with yeah. a bit more of her. Yeah. Yeah. And Trinity is always welcome. Yeah, well, considering how close she was, I mean, she was sort of uh, in a couple, several scenes, but still, uh, considering how close she is to Iron Fist and all that, I was actually surprised she wasn't featured more heavily in the Iron Fist show, but anyway. And, yeah, and here she's more connected to Jessica Jones. Yeah, it's weird. But uh, I mean, I mean, any chance to see Carrie Ann Moss being an absolute badass bitch, I'm good with that. But again, she's one of those characters that will, that has already been floating in and out of three different shows. Hmm. You know, now she's now Foggy works for her, so she's probably going to show up in Daredevil as well. Hmm, possibly, and um, and there's Claire Temple, whose whole job it was to connect all these people and bring them all together. She's sort of like the Nick Fury of this mm-hmm. this these shows, and she did her job very well. And frankly, I wouldn't really care if I never saw her again. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I like her. I like Rosario Dawson, and I like the character. I liked her in Daredevil. I liked her in Jessica Jones. I liked her in Luke Cage. And then by that time of Iron Fist, it's just like, I'm kind of done, you know? And I'm not saying we shouldn't see more of her. I'm not saying that they couldn't do new things. I'm not saying Rosario Dawson has not and will continue to give a good performance. I'm just saying I've stopped caring. Like, cause like when I saw like... Jessica Jones, I'm like, oh, it's Claire Temple. Luke Cage, oh, it's Claire Temple. Iron Fist. Oh, it's Claire Temple again. Like, I, I feel like if at the end, instead of Daredevil having died, if Claire had made some heroic sacrifice, yeah, it would I, have been a real culmination of her character. Like to the extent that, because her character arc has been, she's meeting all of these heroes and thinking about how she's not special. And she even has that conversation with Colleen in like the last episode saying like you know i i keep meeting these people but i'm i'm not special i'm not a hero i'm not like them and i would have i feel like her moment should have been she finally gets that moment to become a hero and she saves someone and sacrifices herself in in the process yeah i thought maybe like she, uh, to give them more time she like holds down bakuta or something and detonates the bomb or, or yeah or, or she or has to stay like behind that. to detonate the bomb sort of thing yeah yeah, and that that to me, I thought that was where it was going. That felt would have felt right to me. Uh, perhaps a bit predictable if all three of us thought that was what was going to happen. But yeah, so I mean, and well done for you know averting our expectations. But on the other hand, here's the thing though: the defenders have been brought together. Now, what's really the point of her? Yeah, exactly. It's like. Uh- yeah. Well, she's still going to play a supporting role for Iron, uh, not Iron Fist. Well, yeah, possibly an Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Yeah, but, but now she's in Luke Cage. Now she feels like almost feels like she's been demoted to romantic interest. That's a good point, I suppose. Yeah, and it's like she's not going to get like she's not so unequal. She's so unequal to Luke that it's almost like she's not going to get her own moment in the same way that she could have in The Defenders. Yeah, I mean, so maybe in Defenders season two she'll die. I- I'm not sure why we want this character to die so much, but still, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. And um, any others? Any other characters you want to talk about, guys? Um, I think we kind of covered it. I mean, Colleen oh. got a little oh. bit of a nice Colleen. Uh, I love arc. Colleen. I still love Colleen. Yeah. Although, although she kind of got the exact same arc that she had in Iron Fist. Towards the end, like, especially, yeah. Yeah, it was like she kills Bakudo, and then she kills Bakudo again. It's like, come on. When the he showed up again, time. I was so angry. I was like, because her killing him was such a great, mo- like, one of the few great moments of that show. And then it just didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, how did she it, kill him in, in Iron Fist? I can't remember. She stabbed him, and then he disappeared. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, the epic battle in the rain. Where did he disappear? I can't remember. Yeah, he was in he had that epic battle yeah. in, in the rain, and then he disappeared. Wait a minute, though. Hang on. Didn't they say in the beginning of the series that they used up the last of the substance to resurrect Elektra? And they so and didn't they do that before? Yeah. Because, it doesn't, it doesn't it, matter. It really doesn't matter. Oh, mind you, there's um, a whole there's a whole uh, Meacham thing where if you die but your head doesn't get cut off, you come back anyway. So I think it's that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. A couple other things. These, so I've got just a few like random bits and bobs if we're done talking about the characters. Yeah, we are. Um, so one of my questions is, why did Alexandra put a bag over Stick's head? 
Why would you call <laughs> the blind man? Yeah, that's sort of the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, why? What? What the fuck? Um. Also, like. Um. Actually, I, know, actually, I know why, because for the for the audience reveal. Yeah, that, that's the only the only reason. Like, there's literally no other reason. Um. Uh, I'm I'm going through all my my tweets from yesterday now. Oh, I also was convinced that Alexandra was going to be connected to Alexander the Great, and that didn't pan out. Um, there was the Stan Lee cameo in one of the posters when uh, the um, Daredevil and when uh, Matt and Jessica are trailing each other. Yeah, because that, that he he always pops up on pictures in this season. Yeah, in these series, which I like. Um, I again. Oh, um, I, I have a comment. Yeah. Oh, go on. Yeah. Okay. So we're how many? We're like nearly ten years into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and people. I'm still, I know, dumbfounded by that. People keep re- like reject in the in the TV shows. People are still rejecting the idea of otherworldly stuff. I don't get it. Why do they keep acting mm. this way? I mean, I sort of agree because I I don't think they should accept it blindly. But they the had aliens. Time. They had aliens invade. Yeah, yeah, but just because aliens evade doesn't mean that every that unicorns exist, you know. Uh, but if you, if you, if 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 I was in that world and I, I, someone told me, by the way, unicorns exist, I'd be like, okay, I'm not going to dismiss this out of hand. I'd like to see a bit more proof, but I'm open to it rather than in this show, as you say, when they just like say, oh, what you're part of a mystical city of Kunlung and you have a glowing eye fist. Oh, that's ridiculous. But it's even after. It's like when um, it's when. Luke is disbelieving Iron Fist, and it's like he punched you with the Iron Fist. You you've literally felt it. Like obviously, there's something to what he's saying. Yeah, he it, still it, doesn't like believe him. I don't know. It's forced conflict. Yeah. So so one other thing that I really liked was um, a lot of the scenes between Matt and Jessica felt very reminiscent of um, scenes from uh, Brian Bendis's run on Daredevil in the early aughts. Uh, when he was doing um, Alias and uh, Daredevil concurrently and had a lot of, like, crossovers between the two. Um, I, I, and, like, there's a scene when they're... It's like, the is this the right brownstone? No, they all look the same. Um, like, that scene, like, there's actually panels that look exactly like that. They're, they're obviously talking about different things, but there's a lot where it's, like... It's basically he won't tell her that he's Daredevil, and she's, like, kind of, like, poking the bear, like, saying, like... Why are you being a dick? I know you're Daredevil. Yeah. I, I don't think all of their interactions were really cool. Yeah. Uh, that's what I like about Jessica. She's willing to say stuff that other people aren't as well. Well, I mean, that's always been her character, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so I think uh, wrapping up that, we've got no more other points to make. Uh, I do have a kind of like hypothetical uh, question for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since uh, we're now going to, uh, I suppose, phase two of the Defenders, uh, which characters would you like to see join the team whenever it comes to season two of the Defenders? Uh, I don't know about join, but I'd like to see Moon Knight. Oh, yeah. I don't know much about Moon Knight. I literally know him like he's a guy on a yeah. cape. He seems to be uh, the one that everyone talks about. Yeah. I'd like to see... This could be a, a really going out of the ballot. I'd like to see a character named Gargoyle appear. Because he's really weird. Uh, All right. Okay, I just. We're not having a Disney crossover, Mark. No, not that gargoyles. Even though that gargoyles is awesome. Uh, no, this this guy is. Hold on a second. He's uh, he's an elderly man who sells his soul to a group of demons called the Six Fingered Hand, and he can transform into a gargoyle to basically fight evil and he's doing it in order to uh pay for his retirement funds okay okay Uh, slightly out of left field i think it's quite interesting um i'd really like to see the uh the white tiger oh yes which one Um, so what i would really love to see so this sort of goes into I, i really wanted to talk a little bit about what i hope for season three of daredevil so what i really want to see is the trial of the white tiger um, which is where the former White Tiger uses, um, basically gets falsely accused of killing a cop. Um, and it deals with a lot of, it's right during the time when Matt Murdock's secret identity as Daredevil has been revealed to the world, but it's still like he's denying it and stuff. 
Um, and so he takes on the case and it's a lot about like, it's a really interesting a uh, couple of issues about like what it means to be a superhero and how the outside world views them. And it's things like, obviously we as like nerds know the exact powers and limits of every character, but you can't say that like, you know, the, the, in the real world, it's like, so the powers of the amulet give him like tiger kind of powers, but it's like the lawyer is basically saying like, how do we know that it doesn't also give him like telekinetic powers? So he could have shot the gun without touching it. And it's sort of like, that's actually a really good question. Like, how do how would a normal person know that? Um, so then he, so spoilers for the comic. Um, basically at the end, it ends with the white tiger being found guilty of a crime that he definitely didn't do. And he ends up killing himself. Um, so I would love to see that as like the first half of the season, as, as uh, sorry, as part of the season of Daredevil season three. And then have a White Tiger spinoff with the the girl whose name I can't remember the young the younger character yeah, um, the taking other, up the, the man white tiger. yeah the other way that tiger feels to me like a bit too reminiscent of how they introduced Punisher like introduce this new character for part of the season and then have him do yeah, a spinoff it, and in all honesty they actually pulled some in, some of the things that were happening in, in Punisher um in like the trial of the Punisher yeah. some of that is sort of pulled from those same issues. But at the same time, that's one of my favorite um, runs on Daredevil. So, like, the more that they can pull from the Bendis stuff, the better. Well, Bendis is goddamn awesome when he's not working on that Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah. So, there we go. Right, so uh, that's what we'd like to see in, in the future. Um, do you know what? I've got a nice idea. Let's rank all of the Defender series from best to worst. Let's go from worst to best. Worst to best. Easier. So, um, worst. I'm just gonna put this out there. What about controversial decision? Iron Fist. Iron yeah. Fist. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right, hands down. Absolutely. I think following that, uh, second worst, Daredevil Season 2. Agreed. Uh, I'd, actually, I, I'd actually say Luke Cage. Only yeah. season, I mean, I like Daredevil Season 2. But I acknowledge that it was not as strong as other shows. But I really, really liked Luke Cage. See, I thought um, Luke Cage, like, I really liked it up until Cottonmouth died. And then from then on, I was just sort of like, they lost me. Well, see, I, 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 they kept me for that. Um, so... I think the other thing is, though, like, I'm obviously going to rank Daredevil Season 2 higher because Daredevil is, like, my favorite character. So, oh, so you can't play favoritism. It's, it's, it's pure bias there. But again, I actually did like season two of Daredevil. I thought that um, the Punisher bits were really good um, and had a lot of really good action and stuff. And I don't know. I mean, it has its problems and I would definitely rank it as the next one above Luke Cage. Um, well, it's my show. So I say goes Daredevil season two, then Luke Cage. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Daredevil season two, then Luke Cage. Uh, uh, if I know, in fact, no, no, I won't say and then Luke Cage. I'd say and then Defenders. Yeah, I'm still on the same page. Um, so I'm going from bottom to top: Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Daredevil season two, Defenders. Okay, and I'm going Iron Fist, Daredevil season two, Defenders, Luke Cage. Yeah, I think I was really down on Luke Cage. I, I, I think that it ultimately, having seen Iron Fist makes me like Luke Cage better. But I also just think that the second half of that season was a real mess. I don't know about a real mess. It went in an interesting direction, but uh, which is why I don't rate it any higher. But uh, yeah. I don't know. But moving on from that, uh, beyond that, uh, oh, we pretty much got update. So uh, uh, Daredevil Season 1. See, I put Daredevil Season 1 at the top, but... But for me, again, it's it's that I love Daredevil so much. You see, I, uh, I, I love Daredevil as well. He's one of my favorite characters. But I think Jessica Jones, season one, as it currently stands, is the best one out of all of them. What mm. I would say is I think that they're pretty much equal. Okay, yeah, um, enough. And that, like, I would put a lot more space between them and whatever you would put at number three. Like, I think they are... The cream Definitely, of the crop. Like, yeah, and I think, um, I mean, I think J Jessica Jones has a lot more in terms of like its message and its themes 
and what it says. But again, Daredevil season one, for me as a Daredevil fan, it was like seeing the character done right in live action. It, you know, it was so much better than that fucking movie. What and about the was, director's cut? You, you, the director's cut doesn't really add anything, but just like... I'll tell you, you what know, it adds. It adds Coolio. That's yeah. Who it adds. Anyway, putting that aside, but like, it's just, you know, seeing Daredevil in action. And, and also like, I really liked the black costume, the look of it, the way that the, the Kingpin as well, the way that, you know, his development over that season was amazing. Um, and I think that like, because it was the first one, people sort of, I mean, I guess Jessica Jones does overshadow it for some people, but for me, it's still always going to be the number one. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, well, Daredevil was sort of like the one thing, oh, we can do these series now, but Jessica Jones was the one that cemented it. Like, that wasn't just like yeah. a bottle of flash in the pan. Like, we can actually do this properly. So, I mean, I don't know. And I mean, I, I you talk about Kingpin, I really liked uh, Kilgrave. Like, come on, yeah. Jessica. I mean, don't get me wrong. David Tennant absolutely is amazing in that. And I love Kilgrave as well. I just think that I wasn't, I, I've not, I'm not nearly as much of a fan of Jessica Jones as a character as I am of Daredevil. Like Daredevil is like my favorite um, superhero. He's my favorite character. Comics, films, putting it all aside, he he's my favorite. So I'm just that's that's why season one of Daredevil is always going to be. Mark, you got to be the tiebreaker. Oh, tiebreaker. Well, uh, in my order, uh, wor- uh, worst to best. Uh... Iron Fist, uh, Daredevil Season 2, Defenders. This is where it gets com- conflicted for me. Uh, because I I think the first, uh, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica and Luke Cage are the only ones which I've revisited since I first watched them. So, okay. so it's kind of like a juggling between which one's better. But if I had to, p- if I had to pick, I'd have to put Luke Cage third. Um... Oh, that's a hard, this is a hard one. Because we've got Jessica Jones, which is amazing. Got Daredevil, which is amazing. Um, I probably would have to put Jessica Jones at number one. Yes, victory. Or I tie. I or they could be in joint first place. Yeah, I, it, I mean, honestly, I feel like they they're like they're the same quality. Yeah. Like, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. And it's all, like, all right. But the one thing that I would say is that Jessica Jones is the only one of all of them that I recommend to people who don't normally watch superhero shows. Absolutely. I'm far mm. the same. Yeah. And uh, okay, I think that's a good point to leave there. Defenders, very good. Few flaws, but feels satisfactory. I'd say. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely, definitely a good, solid show. Definitely. Much better than Iron Fist. Like. Not even on the same. Well, most level. things are better than Iron Fist. Let's yeah. be honest. It's definitely I mean, I think, a, it's definitely a it's very. Good... Hmm? Sorry, you go first. No, it was definitely a very satisfying watch. Yeah, I yeah. thought so. Uh, I think it was a good end to the first part of this net of Netflix uh, success, really. Yeah. Yeah, but Disney are kicking themselves right about now, trying to make <laughs> their own stuff. But anyway, so thank you very much to Mark Russell and David Moloski for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Great. If you enjoy the show, please tell your friends. Shout it from the rooftops. We want to get the word out. And if you haven't already, go back and listen to some of our other brilliant episodes. Like, for example, the one we mentioned before, our Iron Fist episode. Me and Mark, we really dissected that. Uh, so you can listen to that episode and many more on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, or at A Place to Hang Your Cape. Uh, we have a Patreon. Check us out. There's lots of lovely rewards, some of which involve us here at Board Gapers. If you want to get in touch with us, suggest show topics, or maybe you want to come on the show yourself, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at AP2HYC. Thank you very much again to Dan Harris, who designed our lovely logo, the microphone, the red and blue 3D glasses. There's my glasses. And so thank you very much for joining us, Capers. This has been Pod Capers, the official podcast of A Place to Hang Your Cape. Cue the music!